When it comes to allocating goods, one of the things that we look for to try to enhance the uh, efficiency of the market is to see whether or not an outcome is Pareto efficient. That's kind of a, an, an odd term, Pareto, P-A-R-E-T-O, is named after Wilfredo Pareto, an Italian sociologist and economist who came up with this notion of trying to improve the outcomes in an exchange or improve, an outcome, improve the outcomes in a market. The Pareto outcome is one in which you cannot improve either party to a transaction without hurting the other side. Let me say it again. Let's say we've, or let me give you an example of that. Let's say we have two people and each one of them has been given a certain allocation of a good. If there is a way to improve the position of one of them without hurting the other, then we have a condition where Pareto efficiency or Pareto optimality is a possibility. So what does that mean? Maybe a, a more concrete example would be helpful. Let's say that you're a runner and you've decided you want to sign up for the New York City Marathon. Well, the marathon itself requires you to enter a lottery in order to get accepted to run. There's so many people who want to enter the New York City Marathon that you've got to put your name in a hat. Now, let's say that you win the lottery and you are assigned one of the 40,000 spots in the New York City Marathon. You would think, well, this is great. I really wanted to run, and so now I can pay the entry fee. The entry fee is in the neighborhood of $250. I can pay that entry fee and I can run the New York City Marathon. The question is whether or not that lottery is efficient from a Pareto standpoint. An efficient outcome, according to Pareto, would be one in which you, as a winner of the lottery, have no incentive to sell your entry position to anybody else because it would hurt you and it would not benefit anyone else substantially or in, in a, to a great enough degree. Now let's say there's someone else who didn't win the lottery and wants to run the marathon. So here's you. And you're happy, so you have a smiley face here, because you have won the lottery. And here's somebody else over here. And they're sad because they didn't win the lottery. The Pareto criteria would say this, if they could pay you enough money to keep you happy and also to make them happy, then that lottery that assigned you the right to enter the marathon is Pareto inefficient. So let's say that this individual, knowing you've paid $250 to, to enter the race, Let's say that they decide, you know what, I want to enter that race so much that I will pay you for your entry $500. Now if that transaction makes them happy and it makes you happy, it means that the lottery method of assigning, of assigning entry is Pareto inefficient because we have the ability to enhance both parties. Now, the Pareto criterion doesn't necessarily say that both parties have to be made better off. What it says is that only one person needs to be made better off as long as the other person isn't made worse off. So, Pareto efficiency occurs when there are no more transactions that can take place to improve the lot of at least one of these people. In that case, we are Pareto efficient. But as long as one person can be made better off without hurting somebody else, then we are Pareto inefficient. And that Pareto criteria is, is kind of an interesting one to look at when we look at the way, allo uh, way property rights are allocated, with the way we look at how um, goods are distributed, whether it's in a capitalist system or a socialist system. Pareto efficiency is one of those criteria that we use to try to gauge the outcome of a transaction.